Thanks for listening to the Thai Cats Audio Network. It's your digital host, Louis B. And very excited to be launching a brand new show. It's called Speaking with the Enemy. And yes, I said Speaking with the Enemy. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be joined by CKRM620 and a former Thai Cat himself, Luke Melinder. Uh, Luke, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, appreciate it. Um, let's get right into the game, though, because uh, the Rough Riders last game, because it started so well uh, and it, it really got interesting. Yeah, you're right. I think that uh, it would be a whole different attitude in Saskatchewan right now if um, if the BC Lions place kicker hadn't missed two uh, two field goals and an extra point. It'd be a lot different conversation going. So um, you know what? Uh, as you guys know, uh, as, as Fantuz knows, a win is a win. There are no asterisks uh, involved when uh, you're looking at the win loss column. So you got to learn from whatever you see on film and uh, move forward. There seems to be a, a lot of similarities between these these two teams, uh, the Thai Cats and the Rough Riders, it, mostly in the sense that expectations are high, and they're two football crazed markets. And in Saskatchewan right now, I have to imagine that uh, that again, yeah, expectations for this team are are kind of great cup or bust right now. Yeah, I think that you know this. It's funny. There's only four great cups in the history in the 115 or 120 year history history of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but uh, the fan base still here ex expects one every year, right? So, so, and that's great. That's what makes them so special. I think that, um, you know, the expectations coming in were high, um, specifically because of, you know, how the season ended for them in 2019, but more importantly, the, the people that they were, A, were able to bring back, but bringing Jason Moss on as the offensive coordinator, I, coordinator, I think really set the tone in terms of what the Riders expect offensively. So, Excuse me, I think that, you know, last game, it was great because, and Glenn Suter said this when we were talking to him, is that, you know, you saw what the Riders were capable of, right? First half, they were capable of running up the score if you fall asleep on them, right? Um, but, uh, you know, you also saw where they're, where they're deficient right now, and, and consistency is something that every team needs to sort of uh, become uh, as the season moves on here. And, and again, I, I, I would imagine that the Ticats aren't panicking yet, but when you're 0-1 in a 14-game season versus 0-1 in an 18-game season, that actually really changes the perspective on what you need to do. Uh, some of the other similarities that kind of jump out at me is uh, first-year head coaches or second-year head coaches now, uh, but second-year head coaches who, who look like they've been doing it a long time. Of course, we got Orlando Steinauer uh, on the other end. You guys got uh, Craig Dickinson. And, I mean, again – his mentality, have you seen anything kind of change even talking to him? Have you, have you noticed a change in him from, from year one to, to year two here? Um, no, yeah, and I think that that's a good thing for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders because he was always sort of looked at as a guy that would want to empower his team. Um, you know, he talks a lot about leading from the back um, of the pack uh, and letting his guys do the majority of the work. Um, one of the things that you got to do is you got to understand that, that all of the coach, like him um, and Coach O, uh, they're surrounded by really good staffs, right? Coach O's probably got one of the best staffs. I mean, you've got Jeff Reinbold running your, uh, your your special teams. He's one of the best coaches in the league, period, regardless of job. And then you have Tommy Condell, who's probably one of the best offensive coordinators in the league, right? You've got uh, um, Coach O looking over the defense, making sure things are going well. He can always pull from ideas that Jeff Reinbold has. So um, <clears throat> I, I do think that both co coaches, for instance, here, we've got Jason Moss, right? So that um, – you know that that doesn't that doesn't create any undue pressure on, on Coach Dickinson. He can work on things like that he wants to get better at. Right? I know that last year there was a real concern about the, some of the clock management situations that they got in uh, towards the end of games. And I think that uh, you know if you've got a number of things running around in your head and a number of concerns, it's harder to really sort of focus internally and get better at something that you want to do. But for the fact that he doesn't have to watch out for the offense, you know he doesn't. Jason Shivers. Again, he comes from a school of, 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 of Chris Jones, who came from the school of Don Matthews. Like, Jason Shivers is doing a fantastic job. And it's only his second year as a D.C. So these guys are surrounded by great staffs. And I think that that's what enables them to not only have success, but it also enables them to, to be the person they actually really are. Because the minute you start, I think, if you, the minute you start feeling like you have to pick up other responsibilities, that's when, as, as a head football coach, you're going to fail. Well said. We're joined by Luke Melinder here on the Speaking with the Enemy and the Ticats 
Audio Network. Of course, Ticats getting set to take on Saskatchewan. And uh, Cody Fajardo is one of those stories that you just you just got to love, um, right? Guy who, you know, where he was on the depth chart to start the 2019 season and, you know, a, a, a goalpost away from playing in the Grey Cup, uh, let's say, uh, in 2019. Uh, his development from, from, again, from year one to year two, he, he, seemed, he looks like he's playing with confidence. You can see it out there. But how do you expect him to grow here in his, his second full season uh, as a starter? Well, I've said this a number of times. I think that he's got a real opportunity because if you look at what Jason Moss has done with the last two quarterbacks he had, that's Matt, Mike Riley or Michael Riley. So Michael Riley and, um, and Trevor Harris. Now, uh, the success for, with Michael Riley is, is, hey, like he was, he was letting the ball go. They were going downfield, right? They were running up the score. Uh, with Trevor Harris, it was more of that controlled approach. Um, we saw in the first half, right, um, that – Jason Moss with Cody Fajardo was was probably a little bit more to the Trevor Harris approach in the uh, in the calculated the short passes than he was with the Mike Riley mentality and just going down hip and downfield. So um, I think that Cody Fajardo's got probably the best coach you know for him at the time because he's that coach has had success with a number of different co- quarterbacks doing it doing playing in different styles. So he's going to be able to pull and help Cody just re go through those ebbs and flows of the game, right, Um, wherever he needs to. Um, I think that for Cody, (coughs) um, the world's in front of him. His problem is, 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 well, it's not a problem, but the one thing that Saskatchewan needs to make sure is, is they're protecting him, right? And, uh, And I'll tell you what, I, it's one of, as a former defensive lineman, you know, I'm glad you re- you you mentioned that uh, I was a member of Thai Cats at one time because sometimes I forget because it was very short, but it was an amazing sort of finish to the year. Um, but you know, J- Jagger Davis, like Jagger Davis, is probably watching film right now. He's got Cam Jefferson on the right, which is a new offensive tackle, and and he's got Brett Boyko, um, who 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 hasn't necessarily established himself as 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 one of the the main guys here in this league. And if I'm Jagger Davis, I'm really looking forward to, to testing out both those guys. So, um, again, that, that plays into how Cody's going to be able to, to roll out a game plan. If he's running, right, if, uh, and if he's constantly on the run, like Masoli was against Winnipeg, you know, you're not going to have much success unless, uh, unless your team's on the same page in that regard. So um, he's, got, he's got it all. He's got, he's got to be able to hit the deep ball if, uh, if that's – if that was one thing that I that I'd say, okay, well, you know what, what can Cody improve on? I think that it would be deep ball accuracy. But other than that, he's got it all in space, man. He's he's a he's a charismatic guy. He's a leader, and more importantly, man, he's you appreciate him because he he has he has a blast out there. You can tell that this is a guy that's just out there having a great time, doing playing a sport he loves, and for all the right reasons. And just the perfect market for him too, like you said, when you, when you talk about someone who uh, who really kind of embraces the role and embraces the city I think uh, you know just from what I've seen from a distance I know you're there up close um, I do want to ask you about this uh, this Saskatchewan secondary because you know up front the front seven there, there were some questions there were some changes year over year um, but but that secondary they're gonna make it a difficult night for this Ticats receiving core you know uh, Marshall another pick six sets the, the Rough Riders record for pick six mm-hmm. is Edom I mean this is really a strength of this team isn't it oh yeah for sure if there was one strength that you knew and that everybody was looking forward to it was it was the strength in the secondary um, of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders uh, Nick Marshall he's a playmaker uh, Adam, um, I'll tell you what, the guy they don't they don't talk enough about and need to talk a lot more about is Luchez Purifoy. That guy is probably, I would say he's probably their best player right now um, in, in the defensive backfield. And and um, a guy like Blaze Brown, I mean, I know he's not a household name here in the Canadian Football League, but he's also very capable. So uh, for them, it's going to be communicating, right? And it's going to be understanding, you know, how, how their coverage um, what their coverage requirements are if the riders, for instance, are blitzing or they're not blitzing, right? Um, you know, you tend to be able to get more of a jump on the ball if you know that the blitz they called um, requires the quarterback to either get hit or throw the ball within his first step, right? You can break on on receivers that are slowing down and looking to make cuts if you know the ball's coming out quick. It's when it's when those those receivers are getting a little bit more time and maybe that the time anticipated, you know, um, uh, by the defensive back regarding the ball coming out when that's off that's when you can't take 
you know, chances and stuff. And, and they are known to, t- to be a group that, that, that does want to, uh, to take a couple chances and, and try to shoot. Because turnovers are everything. Turno, you know, I, I look at the Hamilton game. Aside from, uh, from your offensive line looking like they needed to get their feet under them against Winnipeg a little bit more, um, the, the reason you lost is the turnover battle. Two interceptions and one forced fumble, right? Like that's that's it. That's that's football in a nutshell. So um, I actually I'm okay with defensive backs like like the Riders secondary taking chances because again when you focus so much on turning the ball over, you're going to have to take chances sometimes. Sometimes you're going to get burnt, and sometimes you're going to come out really positive. So you've got out. You got to weigh the good with the bad there. Uh, you guys kind of get uh, to start at home. Three got three games at home to start. Uh, Ticats starting three on the road. Uh, I knew the electric. I knew the energy was going to be electric uh, in Saskatchewan, and I could feel it through the TV. Do you almost look at the Ticats having a benefit of of playing in Winnipeg Week One and now coming to Saskatchewan? I mean, those are those are two tough markets to play in. And if you if you can get the cadence of of your play calls in a, in a loud building, that's that's the one. Those are the ones to do it in. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, there's also, again, I, I look back and, and this is, you know, this is where I can't help you as an analyst, even though I played nine years in the Canadian Football League, right? Like none of the analysts we have now have experienced a 14 uh, game year, you know, and, and, and how that changes. So uh, I, I normally I would say, yeah, it's great that they're getting their start on the two toughest buildings to play in on the road. But also, what if you come out 0-2? after those two weeks, right? Like you're 0 two in a 14 game season, right? It's not like if I was 0 two in an 18 game season, and coach, and trust me, by the way, the riders have been there. The riders have done that a lot at the beginning of the year going 0 two. It's nothing, right? Ah, don't worry about it. You know, I remember when Derek Taylor first joined the booth, the riders weren't doing that well in the first third of the year. And I was just like, dude, don't worry about it. There's so much season left. Well, is there now, right? Like if you're 0 and two, what is the season that's left? So um, I'm really excited about it. I think that there's a lot, you know, of storylines that you and I are going to get to to discuss with all the fans across the league. But um, I, I know one thing, man. It's just Louis. It's it's really just good to be back, man. It's good to see the guys out there. Well said. Uh, with that, Luke, I think we should leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I'm sure you'll have a great call, uh, like you do every game. And uh, any any advice for for my partner in the booth here, uh, Andy Fantuz, on, on what he's oh, going to do? Just enjoy it, man. You know what? Andy has so much knowledge uh, on the game. It's uh, you guys have a real resource there, and uh, man, have fun because you know what? Uh, again, it was we waited uh, a year and a half to do this, man. So just have fun with it. It's it's uh, either way, it's good. And, and and you know what? To be honest with you, here's a little secret I learned: whether they're hating on you or whether they're giving you praise, the bottom line is they're listening. Don't worry about it. Awesome, Luke. Thanks for doing this. Great to see you. All right, man. Cheers. Luke Mullender of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. My appreciation for him joining us. And this has been Speaking with the Enemy. Make sure to subscribe to Ticats Audio Network so you never miss an episode. I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day.